dad was asking me a question about coronavirus tests. And so I directed him to some like posts I'd done on it um, with like all these nice graphics I'd made. Um, but I don't think that he has the time or interest to actually read the whole thing. So I thought I'd make a Cliff Notes version um, for him and for anyone else who was interested in learning more about the various types of coronavirus tests. Um, so I'm going old school here with flashcards and everything. So basically the coronavirus is like this membrane bound sac so this like oily lipid membrane and then inside it has this viral RNA so the virus has a single strand of RNA that has all the instructions for making more copies of the virus and then it has some proteins and stuff um, and then you hear about this like spike protein that sticks out and that's the one that docks onto our cells and lets it get in and that antibodies um, can bind and prevent that from happening we're not going to talk about the spike protein today really but there's also this like nucleocapsid protein that comes into play with a lot of the antigen tests we'll talk about and so the nucleocapsid protein is like surrounds the rna and then it's this really abundant protein um so if this virus gets into a person um and the person like can't fight off the virus or whatever or not can't fight it off but they like they get infected they can't block it from getting in then what's going to happen is the virus is going to replicate it's going to make more copies of itself so you end up with more viral rna and more viral proteins and so if you want to detect the presence of the virus, you can look for the viral genetic information, so the RNA, or you can look for the proteins. Um, and so the, the way we look for the RNA is with like molecular tests and the way we look for the proteins is with antigen tests. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about each of these, but it's, it's important to, at this point, make a distinction between diagnostic tests, which ask, is someone infected like currently and serological tests, was someone infected? So when we're talking about diagnostic tests, these are going to be, um, there's like a couple of main types. There's molecular tests, um, which is like PCR, um, isothermal amplification, that sort of thing. Um, and there's also, um, what does have in common is they're looking for the RNA, or at least they're looking for copies of the RNA that we make in DNA, as I'll explain in a second. Um, but and then there's antigen tests, which look for the proteins. Um, with serological tests, what you're looking for is evidence that the person had seen the, the virus before or a vaccine for the virus. Um, and so they have developed antibodies against the virus. Um, and so um, that's looking if someone had the infection in the past. Um, so it's looking for antibodies that were made by the person against the um, the virus. So basically antibodies are these little um, these little proteins in the in your body that are made by immune cells. And they have this um, like constant region, this like base of the Y and then this variable region. And so this variable region can change. You can have like different antibodies have different variable regions. Um, and you have a lot of different immune cells that are making lots of different antibodies. And it's kind of like this trial and error approach where if an invader comes in and one of the antibodies happens to bind to like a viral protein, say, then that antibody making cell is going to get selected for and it's going to make more and more of um, that cell and more and more of that antibody. And so the antibody is this protein that the person makes and the antigen is what we call the thing that the antibody binds to. And so different antibodies will bind to different antigens. Um, and so a person because so all of you have like tons and tons of variety of antibodies that potentially could be chosen um and so it's like trial and error but only the ones that like successfully bind to something are going to get but and they don't bind to something of your your own bodies they're going to get selected for so you get a lot of that um and so that's why if you have um these serological tests are looking for um antibodies specific to like a coronavirus protein so what they're going to do is they're going to like put the coronavirus protein, like stick it on a dish or label it somehow or whatever, and then see if the person's blood contains antibodies to, um, against that. And so that's looking for past, um, infection or like late stage infection where they're already mounted an immune response. And so this is, um, looking, um, in the blood, which is why we call them like serological tests. So like the blood serum is like the blood without your cells, the blood cells and stuff. Um, so with molecular tests, remember, we're looking for evidence of the virus itself. Um, and we're, it's, um, sorry, it, so this is including like RT-PCR, isothermal amplification, 
um, and it's looking for viral genetic information. And it's like, instead of in the blood, they're looking like in a nose swab or um, like a mouth swab or spit. Um, and so now let's talk more about these molecular tests. So I mentioned a couple like jargony words. So um, you basically have a couple main types, which would be like your molecular tests, um, which is looking for the viral RNA. And then you have the antigen test, which is looking for the viral proteins. So when I, I say that it's looking for the viral RNA, but actually what it's looking for is like DNA copies of the viral RNA. So this sounds kind of confusing, but basically RNA is not very stable and it's hard to work with in the lab and stuff. So, but the virus's genetic information is in RNA. And so it goes through this like reverse transcription step where we make a DNA copy of that RNA. And then we make lots and lots of copies of a region of that viral RNA. And then we detect those copies. So we need to make these copies so that we have enough to detect it. And usually it's with some like fluorophore, so some like labeled like probe or something that binds to the copies that are made um, and then gives off light or it, it has some colored reaction or whatever. So sometimes um, it's like in a machine, sometimes it's in a lateral flow stick. So it's like um, kind of like one of those like pregnancy tests or whatever where the things flow and then they get stuck and then you see where the things got stuck um, as like lines. But with all of these, you're looking, the basic idea is you're making copies of a sequence and the sequence should only be present if the virus is present. Um, and then you can detect the copies. Um, and so, but just to be clear, this is detecting the viral RNA. It's not necessarily detecting live active virus. Um, but, um, so that's just a nuanced thing about like, sometimes you might hear like that it's on surfaces or whatever, but it might just be like dead RNA or if a person's like shedding virus for a really long time, that could just be the RNA. And so these tests are really sensitive. Um, so the basic idea with, so like RT-PCR is like, I just um, did a longer post on that, but that's like the kind of like gold standard um, molecular test. Um, and it uses this process called PCR polymerase chain reaction. And it involves like, the temperature going up and down and up and down and up and down in this machine and so the reason why you're making it go up and down is to like separate the strands so when you make when you make the copies you end up with like double stranded dna and if you want to make more copies you're gonna have to like undouble strand them um and so you can do that with melting so like raising the temperature so they come apart before you can make new copies with the isothermal amplification techniques so some like the id now um that sort of thing so some of these these use isothermal techniques so like one temperature so they don't do that up and down and up and down instead they use different enzymes so different like molecular reaction helpers that um are able to do the copying a different way so that like they are able to push off the other strand without having to change the temperature. So this, you don't need the fancy machines um, and it can be done up to like at like room temperature. Um, it's not quite as sensitive um, and it can have more errors and that sort of thing, but some of them are really good. Um, so that's one re way where they vary. So that's why you have, so those are more typically more rapid tests. Um, and then the other thing that varies is like the detection method. So like whether you need a device to see the, um, whether you need a device to see the fluorescence or whether it's like some color metric things or just some like colored product um, and that sort of thing. So there's different methods that use different ways to detect it. Um, so those are the molecular tests. So the antigen tests, these are looking for viral proteins. So remember if we go back to our pictures of our antibodies, the antigen is the thing that the antibody binds. So if the antibody is the thing that like the person's cells make or the person's bodies make um, that bind to the protein and the protein is the antigen here, or I mean the antibody is the protein, but the viral protein is the antigen here. So what these antigen tests are looking for is the viral protein. So typically they'll have like antibodies that are bound um, like or labeled or, and or labeled or whatever in some detection method, but you have your antigen binds. Um, if it's like in the patient sample, it'll bind to this antibody um, this like labeled antibody, and then you capture those antibodies. So such these are often done on the lateral flow strips too. Um, and then you detect those antibodies with different ways, um, similar to how we looked before, but here you're looking for viral proteins. So those are the main types of coronavirus tests.